That's the one thing, though, because a lot of people are like, oh, it's so inspirational that you were able to get out and da-da-da-da. And, I'm, and I, I don't look at myself as like, oh, I did all these great things. I look at myself as I had a choice to either stay and live a lie and I, I, the thought of that made me want to die. Like, I, I had planned out how I was going to exit this earth, you know? Today, we're talking to Amanda Ray, who was born into a polygamous cult and escaped at the age of 16. Amanda Ray Grant, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yes. yes. Yeah, we, um, we did some research yeah we did some research and yeah. we didn't want to do too much because we like our guests to like come and talk to us and like you know yeah. make it more of like a conversation so we can kind of just get to know you better on like a personal level right um first of all i do want to say i uh, i think you're so cute and you like are. I'm just oh like God. i just really? like yeah i just like you know <laughs> something about you you just have like a cool energy like i just feel like Oh, that, cool. This that was the way you walked in. It was like I was like, okay, I live for her. Okay, yeah. Amanda. So I've the Air Force is on. She's like, <laughs> right. plan. I've worked for this um, personality. I've been out of the cult ten years now, and so it feels like I finally am kind of having my own sense of self and personality. So that's great. Thank you. <laughs> totally, absolutely. So um, let's just get. Let's just talk about early childhood. Maybe. Yeah. Did you? know that you were in a cult when you were young or it was just kind of like just not talked about did they talk about the outside world what mm. else was going on did you have access to uh tvs yeah. uh, shows right that's what i was wondering like did you like what's the moment you realize like something's not normal maybe right yeah this is uh i feel like a really common question but it's such a good question because there's so many people after i left that would say well, why didn't you leave? Or how did you not know? But when you're, you know, born and raised into something, you have no idea that it's not the norm, right? right? So from a very young age, you know, I I was just really brainwashed and bred to believe that this is the lifestyle that I was going to be living forever, that I was one of the chosen ones, right, to be mm -hmm. born into God's kingdom on earth. And when you're, when you're you know, drilled that every single day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it wasn't just, you know, on church Sunday, it was every day, you right. know? So you're in this kind of world, it, I feel like it was like a matrix. Mm -hmm. Once you leave it, it's like a matrix, but when you're there, this is this is your only reality. So when I was, I was trying to explain this to someone recently, actually, who had never came from a cult, and she was like, why why didn't you leave? How did you not know? Were, were, were people on drugs? Like, how could they believe that that was true? And I was like, well, if you're told your whole life that the sky is purple, the sky is fucking purple. Yeah, <laughs> you're it. not going to yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And then if some random person says, you know, when you're like in your 20s. The oh, sky's blue. Yeah, the sky's blue. <laughs> then you're, you're crazy. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. I really, though, once I started to kind of become conscious and aware, because no one in the group ever said it was a cult. Even I didn't know it was a cult till like maybe a year after leaving. I finally came to the realization, oh, my gosh, that was a cult. Mm -hmm. But... um. When I was in there, though, it felt very much like, have you guys seen, because once you start to realize it and see it, you can't unsee it. So I totally. started to see, you know, like, um, one of the main things was I really could not get behind the incest. And I think the reason why it was a big thing for me, and I was even noticing, was because I had exposure on the outside. Like, I did go to public school for two years. Mm -hmm. And so... I honestly don't know if I would have thought that that was that big of a deal if I didn't have that exposure and if my mom wasn't as anti that as she was because there was people all around me living the incest, living, you know, marrying their half siblings and stuff like that. And so I started to realize these things and, I, and there was this Bible verse. Sorry, that the Bible is going to be brought up a lot in this because it was such <laughs> a yeah, core okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. part of my belief system when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But I would start to read the Bible and there was verses like, thou shalt not lay with thy sister. And so I would start to be putting two and two together, like, wait, the Bible says this, but you guys are doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. And and I remember feeling like, have you ever seen uh, Zoolander? Yeah. Yes, I love that movie. Will Ferrell, when he says, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt constantly. Because sure. right. I would be like pointing this stuff out and they'd be like, why are you questioning God? Uh, right. And I'm like, but this is I the I did Bible. the same thing and I was not in a cult. 
Really? Oh, yeah. I had all those questions because I, I grew up very Christian. Okay. Um, Not very. I, you grew up very, very religious. It was very strict. Yeah, yeah super I, strict. Yeah, I wasn't. My family wasn't like that, but I did have to go to church and stuff like that. And my friend Maria, I used to go to church with her parents. Her parents are worse than my parents. But um, I had the quest those questions as well, so I, I get yeah. it. About incest? <laughs> um, no, about the Bible, oh, no, how it, it makes sense. And stuff She's like, like that. why is there no incest in the Bible? So, so, okay, so, but, so, how did you get to public school? How did you kind of get out of the cult life and be able to go and be around? What yeah. would you call like? I don't know, outsiders. regular we call oh, them outsiders. outsiders. Okay. Right. So we were we were very much taught that, you know, we were the chosen ones and that everyone else was kind of just like noise. Like mm -hmm. outsiders, they're not going to help us get to the kingdom of God. So we can communicate with them if we have to, like if we have to buy something or, you know, whatever, but they are not people that are gonna lead us on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. These are people that are gonna take maybe, you away from your past. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause us to stray. So we were in private schools and my mom here's I have to give a little background on my mom because I think she's a big part of why I was able to see a little more and have more of a perspective because she wasn't born into that like she she wasn't a, a member of that exactly right, okay. so she she was affiliated because her dad was the leader's wife's brother so my mom was like related to, to mm -hmm. members but she was never a part of it and then her older sister marries my dad and my dad is coming around the house and sees my mom very young. Yep. And to me, I felt like it was very, like, predatory. Yeah. Your older sister is the first wife. Yeah. My I mom's, mean, your mom's older sister. My mom's was the older wife. sister was the first wife. And then my dad had direction from God that he needed to take my mom as a second wife. Mm -hmm. And my mom's only 17 at the time. I have so many questions. I know. I, I did, too. When I when I found <laughs> out this whole story, I was like, Mom, did you feel like you had direction, too? But sh it's also like, when you're 17 and everyone around you saying this is what God wants. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to do anything different. So she married him. She joined the group. And then I was born. I was the second oldest. And uh, I was going to the private school. And they, at the time, they didn't have a junior high. So they encouraged everyone to do homeschool with their kids. Mm -hmm. And my mom had tried that with me, but my mom, at the point that I was doing homeschool, I think she already had like eight kids. So she couldn't keep up with everything. And she finally was just like, I'm going to let these kids go to public school. Like she had eight gone to public school. Eight kids by what age? Eight kids. So she got married at 17. Eight kids by, I want to say she was in her early 30s. Okay. They're very much like, you need to be having Pregnant a kid every, every year. Yep. Have a baby every year. Bring as many souls from God to the earth, right? To, to the God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. So my mom did end up having 10 kids total. So I have five brothers and four sisters. But because I was going to the public school, right, I was able to, I remember them teaching us a course. I think it was in health class. And they were talking about how um, there were a group of kittens that, or they were like breeding the kittens with the same families over and over and over. And then it got to a point where the kittens were dying out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so that's genetically not okay to be doing that mm -hmm. but that wasn't taught in my my school you know in in my private, private school, school right because they were little did i know this they were ripping out pages of the health books they were ripping out anything that said anything about evolution <laughs> like they we were very strictly you know this is how we're going to brainwash these kids and this right. is what we want them to believe so how, how was was your father okay with you going to um the public school i think he was really hesitant on it but my mom was more like well, do you want to do you want to raise these kids? And he's like, no. <laughs> right. So, because he already he had he got three wives by the time I was like I want to say eleven or twelve was when he got his third wife, and then now he has over thirty kids. So it was like we didn't even have a relationship with him. So right. my mom had to really be the sole parent, and so I I was lucky enough to go to public school for two years, but then I got pulled back out, and women in the group are very they don't want the women to have any ideas of any other life other than being a mother and having kids, right? So I think it was way more pressured for me as a woman to not get, as soon as they saw that I was getting a taste of the outside life and they saw me asking questions, they were like, okay, get her back in here. Right. You know? Did you ever ask them, like, when God is telling you these things, how is he telling you? Like, what is that? How does that actually happen? Did you ever ask them that? Well, yeah, I, I just was like, 
because they believe in, you know, fasting and praying and you get this premonition from God. Mm -hmm. But then I had dreams and premonitions, but mine were always wrong, you know? So, oh, I had direction. I was supposed to marry this guy who's not related to me. Well, you're wrong. (laughs) That's not from God. (laughs) Right, right, right. So it was very much like the leader and the brothers, like the numbered men in the system of the the hierarchy, they're the ones that know and Mm -hmm. we are so lucky to be in their presence. So so that's interesting because then you have to ask yourself, do they really believe what they're telling people? Or do they believe it themselves? Or is it just like, this they're just there to just abuse women and just have like mm-hmm. kids and access to like all different women to have sex with? Yeah. And you know? this is this is exactly what my thought process was when I left. I was like, there's no way that they believe in this. How could they believe that what they're teaching is true when the leader has 27 wives? Mm-hmm. T- I think at least two of them are his half sisters. He has multiple nieces. And yeah. again, just that one Bible verse alone, don't lay with your sister. Mm-hmm. Where where are you getting these? Right. Uh, you know, you're just cherry picking what you want from the Bible to manipulate. Course, yeah. And what, did you when you were in the public school? Did you meet any like kids? And did you talk about like what your life to any kids, or did you meet any kids that anybody? Did you have any other experiences that made you be like? Okay, so what, what's going on at home is not normal. Mm-hmm. I definitely had, um, w- I was coached on how to lie to outsiders. I was coached that I should not ever be um, revealing God's secret kind of a thing. So I was told to, to say that I was a born-again Christian. I didn't even know what that was. I was like, I'm a born-again Christian. I thought it was all one word. <laughs> 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 but um, I had an experience where I, one of my first friends was a, it was in seventh grade. She was a young black woman, and she, that was very against the group. Mm-hmm. We are very much like, we have to stick to the 12 tribes of Israel and keep the bloodline pure, direct descendant of Christ, which that's a whole nother story. Like, Christ wasn't stuff. white. <laughs> right. I don't understand why they thought Christ was white. But, um, so my first friend, she was a young black woman, and I invited her home. <laughs> and I, I didn't realize, I guess, at the time, I didn't put two and two together how, like, bad that was but I remember my dad being home when I did that and he was very nice but when she left he was like how dare you bring Mm. that to our home and I was shocked because she was the nicest girl in school that's why we became friends so fast I was already so insecure going to a public school and she came up to me and we became friends and so this is where I started to kind of think maybe you're wrong right you know so that well, yeah, was because racism is taught you weren't even thinking about the color of her skin you were just like wow she's really nice to me right she's my friend and i remember crying about it because i'm like yeah. why do i get to go to heaven and she doesn't right why and she's nicer than half the kids in the cult right. <laughs> well at the time i didn't think it was a cult right but yeah so the cracks start to form you know when I was exposed to the outside world, which is why they try so hard to make sure that no one is exposed. They keep you in a bubble. Of course, because I feel like it would be too easy. As soon as you go outside, someone's gonna something's gonna happen where you like. They're gonna be like, "Girl, you're in a cold. Like, you, you need help." <laughs> exactly. Like, just blink a couple times. We'll get somebody yeah. to help you. <laughs> exactly. And that's what started happening when I finally started opening up a little bit here and there to outsiders, mm-hmm. and I started realizing how sheltered I really was. And this happened even before. I even expressed anything because I was in public school and I got asked all the time, have you been living under a rock? Yeah. Because I didn't even know who Hitler was. I didn't know things that normal people knew. Right. And so it was like constantly begging for truth and information and having and having to sift through the lies. So there was no, you guys weren't watching movies, you weren't going to the mall, you weren't Well, Well, there, there's a difference with, um, my group is the Order, the Kingston group, and that's different than the FLDS. The FLDS was very, they wore the dresses, they couldn't watch movies and stuff okay, like that. Okay. We were more, we were in the city, so mm. we had to be integrated. And we were allowed to watch certain things on TV, but it was, it was strict. There were certain things that were big no-nos, and there were certain things that, you know, they wanted us to be watching, if right. that makes sense. Yeah, it's like, like them ripping pages out of a book. Like, read this part, but not this part. Exactly. Right. Right. Okay. Very manipulated. Did they do that with the Bible? So you guys didn't read the Book of Mormon. You guys read the Bible? We read both, but they gave us this, it's called a quad, mm-hmm. and it was the the entire Bible, but it had the Joseph Smith version too. So the Book of Mormon, Pearl of Great Price, Doctrine and Covenants, because that's where polygamy comes from, is mm-hmm. what Joseph Smith started, Right. right. So we believed that Joseph Smith was a true prophet, but the Mormon church had fallen away because they denounced polygamy. 
So we are the true ones that are actually still living polygamy. Right. So looking back now, do you honestly think that uh, they actually believe that, the men? Or do you think they're? It, it's literally just their... Uh, Manipulation, lying. Yeah, just psychopaths. Yeah, I yeah, I think about this all the time. My, I was talking to my brother about it the other, the my brother who left with me. We were talking about this the other day. Like, is it possible that the leader actually believes his own teachings because they're so obviously not true, mm -hmm. and they're so obviously to promote him? Right? Right. right. I I've come to the realization that I I know that a lot of the followers believe it because I did. I know that a lot of the women truly think that they're going to get this, you know, uh, trophy in heaven for undeering all of this on earth. But I can't say that I think that the men believe it. I think that the men know how much power that they have because they're not only getting all these women and getting all of this, um, you know, whatever, pedis the pedestal that they're on, they're getting all of this money and power too. Mm -hmm. Like we were signing 10% forms every year. We were signing inventory forms, which means everything that we own is the Lord's, which is theirs. Right. And mm -hmm. there was such an, even as a kid in the group, I could see the, the unfairness of it because the leadership and his brothers and family always had so everything. much. And there, I had family members who were dumpster diving. That's kind of how, like, going to church is a little bit. Like, when I was younger, I went to the church, and my pastor, he wouldn't even be there sometimes because he was, like, in Africa with his private jet, and he had a helicopter, and oh, it was just like, goodness. we're poor. My yeah. mom doesn't even have a car to drive to the church. And me, a little boy, is giving 10%, to, which I get. It's like, I give 10% because, like, the light bill has to be paid in the church. Fine. But it's like, okay, why are you so rich? Like, it's just like... Yeah, and it's, they're still asking for money in the right. church. It's so true. Wait, what religion were you? I'm Christian. Christian, okay. Baptist. What, I guess it was Christian Baptist. I don't know. Yeah. But I did want to ask, like, so since the men have so many children, like, you have, you had, like, over 30 siblings. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, obviously, they're not there for you physically. They're not there. like, But, like, were they financially taking care of the kids? Or? Oh, no. And this is the part See. that really frustrates me. When I mm. left, I thought that all polygamous cults ran this way, but I think the Kingston's is the worst. My mom was expected to pay rent. I was helping pay rent as a kid. I was I was working as a child. The elementary school bus dropped me off at work, and I was working, and I was paying my way. <laughs> it's like <laughs> when I got out, I was like, wow, they really looked at us as dollar signs. As soon as we were born, okay, how much money can we make off this kid? Wow. And so my mom was expected to pay rent, take care of the kids, make sure that we had dinner. You know, she was doing everything. So there was times where I was like, because she did leave on, on Escape and Polygamy. She left and then she came back. And I remember a lot of the conversations where she was like, how am I going to make it out there? Like, what am I going to do? A support system. And I'm like, you're doing it. Right, <laughs> like, right. you're going to probably have to deal with less out there. Right. Because you are over <laughs> here having to be a single parent and provide with with just having to deal with the noise of my dad, mm -hmm. you know? So even as a kid in the group, I was very like, mom, I don't see what he does for you. I don't understand why you're with him. Yeah, she's just uh, manipulated, yeah. like brainwashed. It was very, but I think that the core thing that, that, that gets all of these women is, I, I saw it a lot in my mom's eyes. It was like a fear in her eyes that, she could be damned to hell. And if, if because we have left, mm -hmm. she holds the guilt of us choosing the worldly things. And she is has. She's still in it. She is still in it. I think that she's still, she definitely still has that um, fear. But I know that now she's a little more um, progressed mm -hmm. as far as like, you know, God, God will understand. God will understand why my kids dis did this and that or whatever. But I think when I first left, there was a lot of, um, please come back. Like, mm -hmm. don't, don't, um, what's the word? Cast your pearls before swine. Is that the right, <laughs> the right <laughs> reference? But, um, yeah, I look at my mom though. Mm -hmm. She was very, a very strong, powerful woman. The sad thing is though, in this, in these cults, they don't want the women to know that. Right. They well, want they to gotta keep them down. Exactly. Yeah, so they can control them. Yeah, because if, if you think of it, the women are running the whole church. Right. Without the women, there would be nothing. Yeah, they have nothing. That's how life is in general. Yeah. Like, with men and women. Without women, we would have nothing. You wouldn't have more children. But we just put women down so, like, poorly. Honestly. Yeah. I think it's because it's uh, they realize how much they lose if, if the women realize how much power they actually have. Mm-hmm. 
And that's the sad thing. I, I love that question, though. Like, do you think they even believe in what they teach? I really think that they don't. I don't think that the leader, I sometimes think he's an atheist or he just doesn't believe in anything. He just believes in himself. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, his whole ego is like, that's the whole church or whatever, uh, right. the whole cult. Yeah. Because how can you be like, oh, he, he wants to go purchase, um, I don't know, whatever he wants to do on his free time. And then he says, oh, well, we can't um, we can't be giving money out of the bank for Christmas because oh, we're running low on money, but really it's that he wants to buy a new business or he wants to, oh, yeah. you know. Right. Yeah. But it's of God. Yep, yep. Yeah. I don't um, know. I want to ask a question about your grandfather because um, in some of the research we did do, we saw that, you know, he was, his first wife was his niece. Mm-hmm. One, how old was he? And two, you said that, like, his, the first children that she was having, they weren't, like, surviving. Right. So were they just being born and dying, or was it like they had a bunch of, like, what, what was happening? I'm just... So so Ortel was the leader before the leader now, and that was my grandfather, and he was the first one to start the incest, and his first wife was his niece. And he, do, he does go on to have multiple nieces as his wives. But what was happening was she, she was, like, not carrying to full term, oh. and then she— she, I think, had like two pregnancies where they did go to full term, but they had died right after birth. Are these his sister's daughters or the brother's daughters? This is this is my grandpa's. Let's see. My grandpa's niece would be, I think it would be his brother's daughter. And the brothers didn't care. The brothers were just like, you can well, have my the daughter. Leader, yes, right? the leader. You just have to like kind of bow down to the leader. Yeah. It, it yeah. was it's such a weird no protection for the young girls. Like Exactly. I was just because I, I asked that because it's like if it was his sister's daughters. Then maybe it's like okay, he, they he, they have He's ownership sure, over right, the women, right. but the fact that it could have been his brother's daughters, the men are just like, well, yeah, just have them. Yeah. You can have my daughters. Yeah, it's very, it feels very Old Testament vibe mm-hmm. because yeah. I did notice too. Even when I was in the group, I put two and two together. Okay, so this family that gave all their daughters to the leader, they have really nice homes and they seem to always mm. have money. But it was never preached, give me your daughters and you'll have these things. But you saw it. Right. You yeah. Know? So it was it was really like trafficking, yeah, like women in a trade. Yeah. So, yeah, to, to answer your question, the, the niece that he married, I believe she was, I want to say she was 17, 18. And she never could have any children live. And I think that really frustrated Ortel, the leader, mm. my grandpa, and to him uh, ultimately they down the line started doing blood testing right, to see right. who could marry who. But they don't tell us this because that contradicts, at least I wasn't told this, it contradicts the whole idea of God will give you direction on who you're supposed to marry. Yeah, right. It's, right. Because it's complete bullshit. Exactly. Yeah. Which is another reason why I'm like, there's no way he believes in this no. stuff. No, he just he's just a f- pervert. Yeah. Just that's... wanted it his way all the way around. Yeah. You know? And I remember asking too, like, because I didn't know what the blood testing was for, what was going on, but I asked a group of girls when I was in the cult, I was like, wait, so you got blood tested, and how old were you, and what was the reason they told you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, well, they said it was because they wanted to make sure we're not getting sick, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, when have they cared (laughs) if we got sick or not? Mm -hmm. I had bronchitis and almost died, and they didn't take me to the hospital. (laughs) Oh, my God. Because they don't believe in the... I think that there's multiple reasons, but I think that there was a time where they were taking kids to the hospital and they were getting DCFS called because there was bruises on the kids. Right, right, right. And then there was also, uh, they don't want to spend the Lord's money on the hospitals. And if 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 God's here, he's going to heal my kids. It's like a mixture of all the crazy. Oh, uh, yeah, the you know? cra- yeah, all the craziness. So I, I looked her in the eye after she said that. She's like, oh, I got blood tested because I, they don't want me to get sick. I was like, poor girl. And she was like we started putting two and two together and I was like, I think that they're breeding us like cattle. It's not in our natural nature to be attracted to a family member. No. You know, so he had to really do the groundwork to manipulate even even the young men too. I mean, I, I would assume that some of the younger guys were manipulated, right? Into thinking oh, yeah. that this was okay. It wasn't just the girls. Right. Right? The the man that I was supposed to marry, he was, I think, 17 at the time. And he, he was doing the process where he has direction, asks his parents, and then he goes forward on me, mm-hmm. which he had to ask my parents. He had to talk to the leader, blah, blah, blah. He comes forward on me, and I'm like... I thought it was like, I don't believe in this. <laughs> like, I don't believe in marrying my cousin. I don't believe in any so of So was it. he your first cousin? Yeah, well, his... 
this is another reason why I was so scared to marry him is I'm like, your dad is my dad's brother and your mom is my dad's sister. Your dad and your mom are half siblings. Right. Oh, he was so our, yeah, our kids are going to have 12 toes. Yeah. Like, like, there's no way. Did he have any de defects or was he like off? He, yeah. so I left and my friend ended up marrying him and he could not get her pregnant. He, he is, what's the word? Is it sterile? sterile? Oh, sterile so. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I guess women yeah. are infertile. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he's sterile. Yeah. So this happens, I guess, when you, when you inbreed so much, then they start to have issues with the sperm now. Yeah. And now there's a lot of women that are secretly getting IVF just to even get pregnant because also women are so shamed for oh, you can't even get pregnant. That's your one job and you can't even do that. It's always the woman's fault. Even though it's the men's semen, mm -hmm. right. it's the women that are getting shamed so that the women are secretly getting IVF. And I know this because I had women reaching out to me telling me this. They're like, please. Like, it's the women are getting sick of it now. The women right. in there, like, it's not our fault that you can't procreate. But they put it on the woman because, one, men can do no wrong. Right. <laughs> and two, um... If a man is known to not be able to get his wives pregnant, he's not going to get more wives. Mm. And there's also the whole like hierarchy of you want to get a number. As a numbered man, you get awarded this number <coughs> or it means it's your ticket to heaven. Right. So a lot of it is just like. Do you guys have access to the Internet? Oh, yeah, we, we do to to an extent. Like I didn't I wasn't allowed to have a phone, mm. but I could use the family computer. But I'm saying like, let's say, you know, you're just like, OK. The guy that they wanted you to marry, you can literally just Google like, uh, my. Uh, I'm sorry, it was his um, his, his mom, his was, mom and brother, his mom and dad are siblings, half, half, half siblings, half siblings. Yeah. yeah, right. But you can Google that, right, and then just be like, this is why he either looks like this or this is why he can't. Uh, yeah. reproduce but how do you know to google that if right. you don't even know especially if they're I, telling you like this is okay this is normal yeah i mean i only felt that way because i went to public school for the two years i went and my mom so after when i said that my my dad took his third wife um i didn't even know that my dad got married again i had no idea what was going on until he had kids with this woman mm -hmm. and someone pointed to the kid and said that was my brother so let me ask you a question because this i'm so curious about this right because I've, i literally have conversations with people about this all the time about like morality mm -hmm. and certain things that you should just know right or d doesn't feel right, right right so when you're younger and you're hearing about like you know brothers and sisters being married or marrying nieces and cousins and stuff like that um do the women have conversations or even the guys maybe that you overheard where they're like this kind of doesn't feel right i know i've been indoctrinated into believing that this is okay but it doesn't feel right or all that goes out the window because that's all you know but so you think it's just the right thing to do yeah there was so i remember one of my closest friends she was engaged i think she was 16 at the time mm -hmm. she was engaged to one of the leader's sons and we had discussions and she said, Amanda, I don't, I'm not attracted to him. I don't want to marry him. But I know that I have to because, you know, I know that the Lord has been speaking through my dad and whoever. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it. But I remember being like, don't do it. <laughs> if, if it feels wrong, don't do it. But not, I'm saying as far as the incest goes. Oh, the incest. Yes. Very specifically, as far as the incest goes, when you know that you have to marry your cousin or somebody has to marry their niece or whatever, do you, do a lot of people in the cult morally feel like I don't want to do this because this feels wrong or they're just indoctrinated in it. They don't even think twice about mm -hmm. it. Like I'm, I, I'm supposed to marry my cousin. Everybody does it. It doesn't feel weird. Or do they actually feel weird about it? The incest. Um, I feel like for me, it was weird because of like what I was saying, but it's also this weird sense of like, like all the families did not live in one home together. So there right. was the half brother could be living all the way on the other side of town. Right. And you don't even know that that's your half brother. Gotcha. So I feel like there were times where, where they didn't even realize how related they were. Mm. And I do think some were attracted to each other. Yeah. There was a, it makes sense. Yeah. There was an, um, an actual baby born. So this story was so like hush hush, but, a woman was engaged to be married to her cousin 
and she got pregnant by her half brother because they they loved each other. Mm. So it's so normal. Yeah, it's so normal that. that but did she know? Like, did they, did they grow they were up together? Or I, that's what I wonder. Mm. Because for me, I I obviously knew who my half siblings were by the time I was like fifteen, right? And she was around that age, so she had to have known. But also, she saw God directing half siblings to get married all the time. Right. You know. Do you... I guess I could. Sorry, I guess I could see, like, if you don't know, like, if Joe was my half-brother or something, I just don't, we have no idea, mm-hmm. then that's different, right? Because well, that does happen. Like, it people, does happen. Yeah, yeah it does happen, because you don't know. Yeah, well, and there there was a time where, but I was a little, little kid, there was a time where I was like, I had a dream about my half-brother, and it was a little bit of a fear. I was mm. like, hey... I had this dream. Is this from God? And my mom laughed at me. It was like, no, because my mom was not going to have that. My mom was very anti that. And she spoke about it a lot because my dad did marry his half sister as his third wife. Mm-hmm. And my mom. What were um, those kids? How did they come out? They. So I feel bad because I I I didn't know them super well because my mom. It, she wanted to act like that never happened. Mm-hmm. So we didn't go to that wife's house. We kind of didn't really even know those kids as our siblings. She kind of just wanted to pretend that this was her world and that has nothing to do with her world. But when I got older and I saw the kids that were the same age as my siblings, like interacting, I remember thinking they were, I don't know if it was a, a mind thing, but I felt like they were growing slower. Mm-hmm. And that could have been a parenting thing. That could have been a multitude of things. But I remember wondering if there was a mental disability because of of that. But there's definitely a lot of um, different things that deformities that happen because of it. There was a child when I was in, I was a teacher at the private school and the child was just born without an ear. And there's, Mm -hmm. there's some physical ones, but I think most of the time it's internal. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, with the whole the whole idea though of people being attracted to their siblings and stuff like that, I think it's so. I, I think that a lot of it has to do with the brainwashing, right? Mm-hmm. And but also when you've never had a relationship with anyone before, too. They they say your first kiss has to be on your wedding day. They say you're not supposed to hold hands till you're engaged. So, I guess when it's you're holding tough. hands with your half brother, this you're is, closest to like yeah. who are the people you closest to, like yeah. And I do think in that kind of situation, not in like the normal world where we like just be outside of school, meeting other people who aren't our siblings. You know what I mean? But if you're just growing up around a bunch of people who you're related to, because that's what it sounds like if the dads are having multiple families. I guess what I was trying to say was like, once you find out that your half brother, not you personally, I'm saying the, the people within the cult, right? Once you find that out, is there it? I guess from your experience talking to people, is there a thing where they're just like, it's my half brother. I, I don't, it feels weird. Or mm-hmm. it's like, this is what we do. It's yeah. not even, we don't even think about it. I think the the cousin thing was a, not even a question. Like mm-hmm. everyone was marrying their cousins. It wasn't because everyone's your cousin. Right? right. But the half sibling thing was, there was whispers for sure where people were like, um, it's a little too close. Yeah. But then but then when they would actually talk about it, it's like, well, the leader married his siblings. And mm-hmm. we don't talk about that. Right. You know? So I really think it's just So he said he basically set the tone. And then, you know, the younger kid mm-hmm. the younger generation is just like, well, th- that's what our leader does. So Right. And if you question, are you right. questioning God? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, excuse me. Are there ever um is it mostly women who might have issues with things or do you, are there ever men who are in the um, you know organization in the order that are like this isn't right and there there's definitely been quite a few men that have it's obviously harder for women like obviously a woman at 15 I was like I don't know if I could do this that's when I realized I was going to leave because coming to terms with having to raise my kids in this like and I didn't even have kids but I, I knew that that was my destiny to have kids in this and I could not raise them like that and there were men that were similar like I don't want to have multiple wives because I can see how hard that will be to actually take care of this one and, and the kids with them but they taught at least in my generation you have to have three wives to get into the celestial kingdom so there were men that were like I don't know if I can do that very rare but then also gay men Gay men would come out. There was a man who I have a friend who has a YouTube channel and he just interviewed him and he had come out of the cults. He was married, had kids. He told them that they were gay and they were like, that's fine. We're, we, they were trying to encourage conversion therapy 
And it was very, because because God's plan, right, in mm-hmm. this group is you get married and you have kids for the kingdom of God. If you're gay, okay, but you're going to still get married and have kids. Right. So, yeah, there were men. There were, it's mostly gay men, <laughs> but then also um, men that, you know, really loved their wife. Or even my little brother, Eskel, who left, he saw what our mom went through and he saw his older sisters having to face the same thing or leave and he was like i can't stand behind it you know so 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 they they gay men right Mm -hmm. they get out but they still have a bunch of children yeah some of them do yeah and now when they get out of the cult or out of the situation they're like out of the closet, free to do whatever they want. Where's the kids? Do they still help out or the kids are still mostly in the cult? Um, I think that with anyone who leaves, the cult tries really hard to keep the kids. They try really hard to manipulate in any way possible. And sometimes it works where, because you're you're so used to signing these papers, right? 10% and all, all of my income is outgoings in the name of the Lord. And they convince you that that these these are actually tangible like that they could go to court and be like oh you have to give me everything you own because you signed this piece of paper right. we think that this is real because we don't know what lawyers are like in the real you know what i mean yeah. we don't know what the laws are right. <laughs> we're marrying our siblings they just scare you to death. <laughs> right, yeah right. yeah so i they fight really hard to keep the kids but the the one scenario that i do know of where this man left he does he did fight to be able to have rights to his kids and that's the hard part though is the kids still go to the cult but then they come to him so they have at least they do have that access to both worlds mm. but they because she is a parent she gets to have them going to the to the cult and mm. be you know continuously brainwashed but yeah there have been times where a woman's left too and the man tries to fight to get the kids to stay and it's it sucks because i feel like utah's system is very it's so like mormon saturated mm. and it's so there's been so many times where we've found out that the order was paying off police officers. Right. So it's I very, believe that. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. They have to. Yeah. Super corrupt. And I've, I've witnessed it myself with my whole escape story. I don't know if we want to go into detail. With I was going to, I was about to ask about that. Yeah. 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 Let's, yeah, okay. let's get into it. Um, so like I was saying at 15, I started to realize I didn't want to be a part of the group, but I didn't know how I was going to leave. I had no idea where I was going to go. I had been running away and getting sent back home. And so, Finally, there was a day where I had a friend who was a member of the group who was like, Amanda, I want to leave. And he he knew that he could talk with me about it because I had been talking about it. And he said, well, I've I've left. I got I got all my things, but they won't let me get any, any of my money out of the bank because the bank is this order bank where all the members, you know, put their money. You're not allowed to go to an outside bank. This is your bank. The Lord's Bank, whatever. But he uh, was like, I have. That guy is just a motherfucker, boy. Yep. He's spending the money. He did, oh, yeah. He, like, he made sure that you guys were, like, stuck. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's and terrible. It's, but it's all under the guise of God, right? So right. it makes you feel like, oh, I'm so grateful that he's helping me out. Mm. <laughs> even though it's like, <laughs> my mom had to struggle to even, like, you know, get Christmas gifts and stuff right. for her own kids. But, yeah, so so here's this bank. And, and he's like, Amanda, I don't know how to get my money out of this bank. They are... They had this thing where if if they started to find out that you're going to leave, all of a sudden your account's going to zero. Mm. You know, all of a sudden you don't have money. And so he was like, I have, I think it was like forty or $50,000 that he had in this account. And he's, and I had worked at the bank. And he's like, do you know how I can get my money out? I don't know what to do. Like they're, they're saying that I'm not going to be able to get my money out. He was freaking out. And I was like, I, I don't know what to do. Maybe we can, um, rob that motherfucker. I know. Cause all, all I knew how to do was to do fake authorization codes to get, um, 500. That's the most I could get out with a fake authorization. So I was like, I guess if we do this this many times without them catching us, (laughs) but then he had the idea. He was like, Why don't you take my phone since they trust you because you work there? Go take pictures of all the underage kids that are working there illegally. There was like, like I was saying, an elementary school bus was dropping me off to work. At the bank. Yeah. That's crazy. Child labor laws are being broken, right? Yeah. (laughs) So he's like, go take pictures of all of them and we'll just blackmail blackmail them. Yeah. And we didn't know what we were going to do with the photos. Like, we're going to call the police. Like, we had no idea what we were actually going to do with them. Right. But we were like, maybe the threat will be scary enough to them because they were so afraid of getting exposed, right? So I go back there and I start taking pictures. And I realized that this is probably going to be the last time that I ever 
you know, see any of these people. So I wanted to go say goodbye to my friend that I had been close with my whole life. She was in the other room. And I went over to say goodbye to her. And from behind me, this guy, it was the leader's brother, huge guy, comes up from behind me. I guess they had seen that I was taking photos. And he starts attacking me, trying to get the phone. Was like clawing me in the neck. Like I, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't even know someone was behind me until like I saw her reaction, right? Like mm -hmm. she was seeing someone. I was like, what's going on? It was like a blur, so much adrenaline. He attacked me, grabbed the phone, starts pushing me out the door. And I was like shaking. He took the phone. I ran across the street to my friend. And and as I'm running to him, he's like, he starts bawling. I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? He's like, you're bleeding. You're bleeding. And I'm like, I I was bleeding he from my throat. Me? He cut me with his nails. Oh, wow. Like bleeding down the, the neck. And then I had apparently like bruises and handprints all over me. I was in so much adrenaline. Like I didn't, didn't feel, feel it. Right, right. So he's like, we need to call the police. We call the police. And... This cop just happened to be driving back to the station. Sometimes I'm like, this this was a sign that it was this specific cop. But he pulls over and he happened to be the same cop that. So there was a baby that had died in the order and the order was saying that it was an accident, but it was by the autopsy. It was not an accident. Mm -hmm. The the leader's brother had to have beaten this child to death oh my god yeah and someone else took the fall for it and they kept saying it was an accident but that cop that had pulled over when we called was the same cop on that case so when i told him everything because i was scared that it was going to be a cop that was going to get paid he off he knew the guy already right. he already yeah. knew mm -hmm. so i told him and he was like the kingston's are bad news i was on the scene when that baby had died and they're liars like he he wanted to get them he was like like happy that I called basically. So he tries to go in there and, and they're like holding the door shut. There's papers flying. They're like, we, we, we don't want to come out till our lawyer gets here. We don't want to talk till our lawyer gets here. And the lawyer obviously is the order lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's a numbered man. So we're waiting. We're like, I don't know what we're supposed to do. He, the cops like taking pictures of me. And he was like, this, this memory will be burned in the back of my brain forever. He was like, the Kingston's are bad news. And I think you should take this as your silver lining and get out. Like, yeah, don't ever moment. look back. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do just that. 15 minutes later, or maybe 30 minutes later, it was all a blur. Another cop comes by and he asked me to get in his car. And I'm mm. like, okay, I'm 17. Suspicious. Yeah, it was weird. I get in the car and he's like, you don't want to press charges on this guy who attacked you. It's going to be a lot of work for you. And the most he's going to get is a slap on the wrist, maybe some community service. Yeah, he got paid off. Right. I was like, and I don't know the laws. So I'm like, right. maybe this is true. Maybe he's right. Maybe it's going to be way too much work for me to do this. And so he gave me his card, though. And I went and talked to another ex-member. And she was like, yeah, he's been known to work with the order. And so I was like, wow, this is it's it felt like you're just like, you know, drowning. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah, one's helping. I can imagine. But um, <clears throat> overnight, though, the entire order said that. Amanda clawed herself in the throat, <laughs> caused this huge scene to try to hurt the order. And um, there is video footage that he never laid a finger on her. And she's just being basically like dramatic, mm. like shaming me. Yeah. yeah, where's the video footage of you doing it to yourself? They exactly. Do that. <laughs> and that's what they, to they told them that there was like, there's video footage. And so I was trying to fight back and be like, you guys, if there's video footage, why didn't they show the police? Because he right. did have to do anger management class. He, he had to, he had it on his record and he tried to get it expunged two years later. So mm. if there was this footage that he never touched me, why didn't they show that footage to the police? Right. Well, yeah, and you got to think too, with him and his brother, um, they could do whatever they want at any time. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he didn't get his way and you're like taking pictures or he like kind of catches you going against the order, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He just it was filled with rage. Like, how dare you? Yeah. And your friend was there. You know? She saw it happen. I'm sure she told some people. That's like, what I was everywhere. saying. There was at least five witnesses right. that know the truth. But it's like, are they going to sit there and run around telling people against the leadership, right? Unless then, they want to leave privately, too. maybe, but not like just like no, I know what really happened. Probably not like publicly, no. right? Because then they're just gonna get shamed, just like me, exactly. right? And I think that's that's honestly a smart thing that this religion does is anyone who leaves, anyone who does anything to 
to stand up for what they believe in. They just make them out to be a uncredible source, right. a very, you know what I mean? So then you don't trust that person. Mm -hmm. It's kind of genius. Have you seen The Handmaid's Tale? Yeah. There's that scene where someone, a woman escapes from Gilead and they're like, oh, we have to go get her. We can't let her be like a beacon of hope. And mm -hmm. they're like, well, we don't have to do anything. We just have to dis discredit her. Yep. Make so no one trusts her. Yep. Yep. And, it's, and that's exactly <laughs> what they did to me. That's what they do. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think that if someone's questioning and really wants to know the truth, they will find it. Exactly. And I feel like everyone knows the truth anyways. If you want to believe it because you just want to just, like, make life be easy and just sit there and act like what they're telling you is the truth, yeah. fine. But, like, people know deep down inside, like, you didn't claw yourself in the throat. Yeah. Well, it's also <laughs> yeah, true. Exactly. It's like... That's exactly what you you were saying. Like you, people like to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. So if they want to believe that all that the leadership is doing all this crazy stuff, then they're going to be uncomfortable now, and they're going to have to decide if they're going to follow a leader right. like that, yeah. or if that just never happened. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep on this lane right here right. <laughs> because it won't disrupt <coughs> their their reality. Right. How did you? Um, so when you get out, how did you? I mean, live, make money, have an apartment, have a place to live. Yeah, it was definitely a... Well, looking back, I'm like, wow, that was a struggle. But at the time, I was like, I get to keep my paycheck? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so rewarding to see that I didn't have to put my money into... You know, no one was over that. Even though I was literally making $250 a paycheck and my rent was, I think, 200 at the time. And I was walking to work and I was so excited that I got to be so free. But looking back, I'm like, right. that was a struggle bus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I went from job to job and it was kind of hard to uh, find a, something healthy, I guess, because I was very unhealthy, not realizing it. When you come from such a toxic place, I think that I, I had the wrong mindset of, well, I left all the toxic behind. I'm going to do better, da 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 But I didn't realize that I, you can't just overnight change. Mm -hmm. So I was bringing a lot of negative things with me that I didn't realize. It's kind of like... I get it. Yeah, I think yeah. we bring... I think everyone does this yeah, without knowing. Yeah, yeah, you think that you're bringing things that are helping you, like from your past that are actually hurting you. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Yep. Did you like deal with any harassment from... The order afterwards, like while you were out, did they like stalk you, yeah. follow you? Dude, like, I mean, it was just like, you know, how how does it feel that you're going to hell? It's a good thing you're going to hell, not bringing anyone else to hell with you now. And then, of course, when I I got approached to go on escape and polygamy, and I was like, of course, I want to expose them. I want to expose them for everything that they're doing because this is so wrong. They're, and it's not that because a lot of them would be like, why can't you just leave and stop hurting us? Stop trying to hurt the order. I'm like. I have family that's there. It's it's not like I can just walk away and pretend that they're not going to be going through the same things. Right. Like, I know what's going on there, and I'm going to expose them as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And the, this is the, the shitty thing about being the leader, though. Like how you're saying, like, there's no way he believes any of you. I don't think he does. But the shitty thing about his system is he's making he's all of these ex-members now, they have nothing to lose. And you're making enemies out of people who have nothing to lose because you took everything. Mm -hmm. So eventually, that's how these leaderships fall because of that. Right. That's how Warren Jeffs went to prison. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. Or somebody I, goes back and fucks him up. Yeah. It just, you know, it, um, it's interesting to me, like, the question about do they actually believe or do are they just manipulating? Because how you told the story about um, the first the founder, mm -hmm. and how he died, and they had him in the tub because they thought he was going to be resurrected. Oh, yeah. But it's like, when he's not resurrected, then what? What do they think then? Are they just like, oh, that didn't work out. Well, but... maybe she could tell the story here. Yeah, um, sorry for, for anyone who hasn't yeah. known this story. So the mm -hmm. leader, the very first leader, his name was Eldon, and he died very young, in, I think in his 30s, of this cancer that could have been prevented if they would have just believed in going to the doctors. But they really thought that it was going to be like, the Christ's second coming like in three days he will be resurrected because he is God's chosen man right. and yeah they left him in the did tub did they believe it because he made them believe that I don't know okay I've heard multiple accounts but from the the majority of because I wasn't alive in that time mm. I just have to listen to older members who are willing to talk about it and they said that the people just truly believed you know truly believed he was coming back that this is not 
you know, real that he's going to die because why would God do this? Right. So they, they kept his body for three days and then he wasn't coming back. And I think after that, they kind of tried to cover it up because I didn't know this story till I left. Right. Because it's, it is, it's like, so you guys were wrong. Yeah, it's like right. once, you, once you're wrong and you have to cover up, why don't you think like, okay, maybe I'm on the wrong path. Maybe right. like I need to f figure something else out instead of being like, no, let's keep this lie going. And mm -hmm. uh, The hardest thing to do is analyze yourself, though. It's true. You know? And I think that what the leadership does time and time again, and I've seen this in so many other cults, whenever something happens like, like, a, like a leader going to prison or anything like that, Oh, the followers weren't being loyal enough. Mm -hmm. You guys weren't praying hard enough. That's why this didn't happen. And I do think that some of the followers, when he didn't get resurrected, were like, we weren't praying hard enough. We weren't fasting. Yeah, it's everyone else's fault. Yep, everybody else's fault. No accountability on the leadership. So then, and that's the scary part too, is when you're always like, well, God said, well, God said, well, God mm -hmm. said. So then anything the leader does, God said, and there's no. How do you feel about God now, being out of the cult? Like, do you still believe in God? Do you do you feel like God actually speaks to people, from, I have, or you, or, or maybe they were just using God in a, in yeah, a, in a messed up way? way. Mm -hmm. It's such a hard um, relationship for me because I'm. It's been ten years now, and I still feel like I get triggered when people and I know it's not their fault it's my own trigger that I need to be working on but when people will comment on my YouTube stuff and say God oh, loves you yeah God loves you and, and I'm so sorry that God that God was shown to you in this negative way but I hope that you find Christ again and like they're trying to push me to to do that right. and I understand <laughs> that God was something that was very great for them and I acknowledge that that's uh, something for some people get hope in it. Right. For me, it's a very like frustrating thing and mm -hmm. it's a very confusing place to be. And I would love in a perfect world to be able to be like, you know, I've found God and like I find peace in him watching over me. And I know that there's a an afterlife that brings me all this peace and love. But right now, if I'm being honest, God has been used not even just in my cult, in the world of course, God yeah. has been used to do so many terrible, terrible things and justify them for God. Right. That I just don't even know if I can stand behind God because the definition of God is so tainted now for me. Same. Man, <laughs> yeah, what, I feel the same way. More like religion, I feel like. Right. You know, Man-made religion. Yeah, I think that like, because I feel like, I mean, some people don't believe in God. Some people do. But I feel like if you feel like you have your own thing going you have your own thing going. It's when you try to like make a group and uh, control people and right. to do stuff like that. That's when it's like, okay, obviously you're not. If God is supposed to be a good thing, then why is this not a good thing? Exactly. Because like, I do look back on the story of Christ and I find like, wow, I, I do resonate with, you know, he who has not sinned, cast the first stone. You turn the other cheek. I love a lot of those teachings. But are all of these churches actually living by any of no, that? No. Most of them are not. I don't think. Right, like a lot of wars are Most started. Most people aren't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so to me, I'm like, I I never judge anyone that wants to believe in that stuff. But I I do get upset when people try to stand behind God, to put themselves on a pedestal, and 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 that's the only reason they're totally. You know. Yeah. It seems too common now. It's gross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it really feels is. gross. It's like believe in your God. That's fine. But like. To, you know, say like, oh, well, you don't believe in the God that I believe in or you don't abide by what, you know, um, the teachings that I pick and choose to believe in in the Bible like we were talking about right. earlier. Right. Not the incest part. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like now you're going to hell. Right. I'm curious, though, your both of your beliefs on I, God. I believe in God. Okay. Um, I was raised like as a Christian. Um, I definitely think I have developed my like own I mean, this is kind of cliche to say, but I feel like I have my own relationship with God. I definitely view God as a positive thing. Right. So I would never be like telling somebody, well, God told me this, so this is what you need to do. And right. God, you know what I mean? It's like, that's my thing. That's how I feel. I respect everyone else's um, yeah. choices in their religion and their beliefs. And you know, Do you feel like you had a really positive um, perception of God as a child? I feel like through my mother I did. Okay. Um, because she just taught me that God was like love and she never made it a negative. She never used God to make me feel bad about myself. You know, um, like I am, you know, I don't even know if I want to like, <laughs> 
But my mom didn't make me feel bad about myself. Okay, so I'm a gay guy, right? So like, I I just don't even want to say that because it's just like I'm just so over being gay. But <laughs> <laughs> like, so it get was you some pussy, upon? Joe. So huh? we will get you some pussy later today. <laughs> it, it was frowned upon then. Well, being gay is frowned upon in the Bible, even though like I read that they added the word homosexual to the Bible in like 1959 or something like that. But um, the Catholic the Catholic Wasn't Church it, added like that. pedophile before. It was pedophile something. before. It was wow. a word that translates to pedophile. That's the with the research that I've done. That's what I found. Mm -hmm. So my mom never did that, you know. But she believed in God so much, so she did. Used to be worried about me being gay, but she was more so like worried about my safety because people just hate, right. you know, other. My dad, he. I wouldn't even say he used it negatively, but he just brought it up every time I saw him. He would be like, the Bible this and God that and da 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 da. But he still, I even had positive experiences with God with him because I do feel very protected in life. I do feel like my dad used to anoint me with the oil and the wine every time I left his presence and I feel like I'd be safe. Like I feel like I'd be, like yeah. when I go places, I feel safe. I don't like, harm can be like this close to me and just miss me just like that. Wow. So sometimes I feel very protected. And so I feel like that's just my thing with God. Like, yeah. It sounds like a, it was a good experience then. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that if I had a really good experience, why why would I? Yeah, I could totally it? understand why someone in your position would be like, oh, God, really? like. Yeah, the question is. Yeah. yeah. What was yours? I am uh, I am an atheist. <laughs> I'm more on the same path. <laughs> I am a straight-up atheist. I believe that Jesus was a cult leader, and I believe that uh, he... Uh, you know, he ha he has, you know, uh, like the Ten Commandments and stuff. I think that, like, that's good for people, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that um, just because he said good things for people to do essentially good things mm -hmm. or um, just be genuinely nice, uh, I think that it traveled all over the world. And that's why Christianity is the number yeah. one religion in the world. Um but I still, I do still believe he was a cult leader for sure. Absolutely, yeah. I believe he was an actual man, like he existed. I don't believe he's God or the Son of God, or I don't believe in God at all. Right. So yeah, I've heard a lot of theories like that he was a pothead, and that's where he was coming up with all of his chill <laughs> vibes. But yeah, I, they were like eating mushrooms and shit, yeah. and like seeing water turn into wine, and like you right. know stuff like that. Yeah, and maybe then sure. they really thought that it did turn into wine because they were on mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. That's what I. That's how I personally believe. Yeah. So. I guess I wouldn't. I don't know if I would say I'm atheist. I maybe agnostic. If I if you have to label agnostic, it right, agnostic, because yeah. mm -hmm. I don't want to say that I know what happens. You know, because right. mm -hmm. I don't. But I would like to believe that that you know. I always re repeat the Einstein said, "Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. We are just transferred. Mm -hmm. So we are energy." And whatever happens when we die, we are we are just transferred. <laughs> but I don't. I'm not gonna say. Oh, there's a celestial kingdom, a celestial terrestrial, right, and then there's right. a hell, and all the yeah. gays go to hell. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, who yeah. gets to decide that? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm my thing too. I don't really know about like heaven, hell, and stuff like that because I feel like Earth is hell. So I'm oh, just yeah. like, you I know, think you Earth's just die and it goes back to the way it was when you were a baby, like just nothing. I mean, before uh, you were born. Yeah, not a baby before you were born. Do you, what do you think of the idea of reincarnation? I don't believe in that. Yeah. I don't believe in the spiritual world. But what about Slash? He's a German. I know, right? It's so funny. <laughs> Her baby. He was like speaking in German. He's like, when he was I, like... I, 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 I. I'm like, dude, are you like a Nazi that came in back? Like, what's going on? Like, why are you talking like That's that? That's so crazy. Speaking of Nazis, how you said like you didn't know about Hitler and stuff. Yeah. And it made me think like about how the the men or the leaders keep like control over you guys and stuff yeah. like that. Are a lot of them abusive? Oh, yeah. And I think that that's why they didn't want us to know much about Hitler, because I think they were teaching it at some point, And then they're like, this sounds like what you guys are doing. Right. right. But they're so it's not really every single man is abusive. But there were talks in Sunday, like on the on the pulpit, the, the man would get up and say, if your child is disobeying you, even at two months old, he needs to be corrected. Mm. Like, so they were promoting abuse. Two months. What are you supposed to do at two months? You're like two months old. Exactly. They disobey cry. everybody, like, right? Exactly. But they, they kind of acted like this baby's being disrespectful. So that's why the baby was... What about what about yeah. rape? Is there a lot of rape happening or... The saddest thing... Well, there's so many sad parts of that subject, but marital rape isn't even a thing. Like, you are your husband's once you're married. Right. You know? It's property. 
And a lot of women who dare talk about this, they they will say like they've never they've never orgasmed. They don't even know what that is because you don't have sex for pleasure. You have sex to have a baby. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times, you know, that's the woman is the property. Like the like handmade sale. It really and, is. Yeah. It really is. Like they have one job, and you need to be doing that job for for the kingdom of God, for the Lord, whatever, right? So. Um, I think there was a lot of, there is a lot of marital rape going on and there's obviously going to be a lot of sexual abuse in a place where sex isn't talked about, right? Mm, right. It's very shamed, very brushed under the rug. So if there's abuse happening, one, how do you know what it even is? Cause it's not talked about just like, how did I know? How am I supposed to know I'm in a cult? It's mm -hmm. not, it's not even a thought, mm -hmm. right? So stuff like that was happening all the time and it was very just like, if, if it got brought up again, Blame, where does the blame go to the girl right usually always the girl and even if a man's being unfaithful i mean what polygamy is what it, what even is faithful yeah, at that point right right, right. It's, like, oh, but, you it's married always... a fourth wife without telling me but i am telling you the inbreeding was real oh, okay. there it, like, may, it looks crazy they look yeah there was a lot of them that even even in the group it was like hard to pick someone that was attractive because they were Did all they have what is that called the um aspergerton is it asperger mm. Asperg's, Asperg's chin. It's like the big chin that you get when you when yeah, you're like, inbred. inbred. No. It's like the wrong. No, I've never turn. heard of that. No, have really. I need. But, have you ever seen the movie Google Wrong it, Turn? Yes. Like, is, it, is that supposed to be? Is what it, it, <laughs> you know, they're supposed to be inbred. Those, they're those are super inbred yeah. because that's like they're but, just you know. And I think that we would have all looked like that if it weren't honestly for the blood testing. I think that they were able to breed out some stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't think everything obviously because there's people that are now infertile, right? right. And what about the guy that you uh, married? Or. Oh, oh when it's I Hasburg. 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 Hasburgers. I'm still like, Hasburgers? I'm still I don't know, I was like, of, Asperger's? Can someone like Google autism? that in there, please? <laughs> that Hasburg chin Oh, wait, chin or yeah, I, I was afraid. Is it called Hasburg? As something like that, chin from in, inbreeding. I saw a documentary on this. It was like the... Hasburg I think I know jaw. which... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It says, has long been associated with inbreeding due to the high prevalence of consanguineous. Okay, I don't know how to say so that So they word. didn't have that. I didn't see any of that, no. Marriages in the Hasburg dynasty. Mm. This is the weird thing, though, is a lot of people are like, how are the girls from the Order so pretty? And there's, there's, there is a lot of really pretty girls from the Order. And Yeah, I was like, yeah. like. Did I, you think I was going to look I, in I think, No, no, I saw you, so I, I thought she's cute, and then I saw some of the other girls. I'm like, they're cute. Like, they could really yeah, do something in the, the normal world, you know what I'm saying? And that's, but, but then I they, see they, the men, and I'm like... But they, are they inbred, too, the girls? A lot, a, of, the girls? A lot of the ones that have left... So I am friends with quite a few of them and I've done interviews with a lot of them on my channel just kind of telling their story and a lot of them have had, I know two who their parents were half siblings and I, you would never see them and say, oh, she looks inbred. Mm -hmm. No, she looks, she's gorgeous. They're totally going to cancel us for this interview. No, <laughs> They're um, going to be like, oh, you guys think that's No, because I'm just looking at the guys and I'm like. I mean, sometimes you got to laugh at your pain. You know, oh, I try yeah. to do that all the time. You know, I, I got to make laugh. fun of myself constantly because mm -hmm. sometimes that shit hurts. The men, the fathers, I'm looking at them and I'm just like, this is why you're using this religion to control because you're not attractive. Yep. You cannot yep. get a woman. I thought that same thing. Unless you're like, thing. God, God said you got to lay him down on your back and let me get inside you. Literally. It's just like, bro, ew. Cause, cause I've thought of this exact thought. I'm like, this motherfucker, if he was out in the world, <laughs> would get no woman. No, so he not. has to be here. Would have no power. Would probably be, nothing. I, and that just goes back to again. They, they just literally was like, I need to create this, uh, this dynamic to like just have as many women as I possibly can and brainwash them into thinking God speaks to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, disgusting and that's why they because i hate that a lot of people on the outside are like well that's dumb i would never do that these women are dumb it's really no. they they it's make bullshit. them less educated yeah. they make they technically kind of make them dumb yeah. right because mm -hmm. they want to control them yeah they and breed you guys like that you guys from, from ignorance are like other options you don't in life know and yep knowing that you're human beings and that you can control your own life and your right. own money that's oh, so yeah. crazy. I hate that question. They do that with women uh, a lot that, you know, have been in abusive relationships. Why didn't you leave? Right. Why didn't you call the cops? Why did you wait so long? Why, like, you don't understand what you're dealing with until you kind of get out of it. Right. You're just like, oh, shit. I literally was being abused. Especially if you're not getting physically beat up. 
Right. If it's just the mental yeah, stuff. Yeah, just the mental, the psychological and stuff. You don't you don't understand what that is. Exactly. Until you venture out, you talk to other people. Right. And even then, you're like... You're just Am in I? it. Like, You're just in it at that point. Yeah, you kind of just are in denial. Like, well, is that me? Is that him? Is he doing that to me? Do I right. understand? Like, well, it's like it's... anyone in. <clears throat> if I was in your shoes, mm. I would have done the same things. If I was in your shoes, I would have done. You know what I mean? Right, right. Like to to, it's so easy to be on the outside looking in and being like, yeah, well, I would have sure. just done this and that. I hate people like that. Yeah, I mean, you so definitely annoying. can't, especially if someone's like in a cult. That's like, come on, and you're born into it. You're just gonna be. You can't really be like, why didn't you just. It's like, one, you're a teenager, and you did have to leave when you were a teenager still. Because mm-hmm. obviously, if you stay longer, they would have made you marry. Oh, yeah. So marry my have cousin. kids. For sure. Yeah. And that's the that's the one thing, though, because a lot of people are like, oh, it's so inspirational that you were able to get out and da-da-da-da. And, I'm, and I, I don't look at myself as like, oh, I did all these great things. I look at myself as I had a choice to either stay and live a lie and I, I, the thought of that made me want to die. Like, I, I had planned out how I was going to exit this earth, you know, because right. I couldn't live a life like that. It was so depressing. And so I remember praying and crying to God, like, please, God, show me that this is true or not. If this is true, why does it feel so wrong? Right. And so to me, I really left because I could not stay. I could. I was so uncomfortable here that the unknown seemed like a better option. And I think that a lot of us as humans do that. Like we will stay in the comfort because we, as humans, we love comfort so yes. much. We won't get out of it unless it becomes uncomfortable. Unless That's it... why me and Joe are still in LA. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, we want to move. We talk about moving all the time, like somewhere else. But we're still here because we're like, oh, fuck, we got like some friends and shit. Right. Maybe. It's just like also career paths and stuff. It's yeah, like, it's like not it's existing LA a anywhere cult? else. LA is definitely a cult. As such like, a cult. They oh. get you, they're like, oh, the sun shining. What was that video you sent where the, where the guy's like, well, so why do you live in LA? It's like the weather. And then he's like, oh, the weather. Like, yeah, it's like it's sunny like, oh everywhere. Oh my God, wow. Like, oh, the sun. Mind like you, that. they take like 60% <laughs> of your money as soon as you get a fucking check in LA. Like they literally oh take. So much in taxes. Yeah, it's for the sun. It's for the it's for for the palm trees, really. When you can move to Florida and you know, carry guns and and like. (laughs) (laughs) Damn, I know. I've I've loved California, but I hear the same thing over and over. So I'm like, I don't know if I could live here, but I love visiting here. So beautiful. Um. So how is it? How is it dating? After leaving, or what? Yeah, like after. Like being out and dating and it's so that's such a good question. I don't even know the answers. <laughs> so I left and was married. So I got married at eighteen mm-hmm. and then divorced at twenty five. Right, my brain got fully developed and I woke up and I was like, I don't like this. Right. So I got a divorce and then I moved straight to Vegas. I like mm-hmm. got out of the Utah life and mm-hmm. and up until that point, I was kind of still living a culty life. I was like not drinking, very. I wouldn't even swear. I was very like still holding on to all those things that I thought that helped me. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, it was it was me thinking that those were parts of my personality, but it was really just the cult indoctrinated in me. So I go to Vegas and I kind of jump into the dating world. And it was scary because I'd never done that before. And I was raised in a place where you don't say no to men, you know. Uh, right. So every guy that would ask me out, I would just give them my number and I would be in these dates where I'd be like, Oh my gosh. I had to come up with a plan where my cousin would text, I would text her grapefruit. It was a code word. Mm. And she knew that that meant she was going to call me and get me out of a date because I didn't know how to be like, speak up for yourself. Exactly. Cause you're not, I never thought about that. Yeah. You're not taught that. So I was a very, very nice girl in a scary place like Vegas. Right. Mm. Right. So I did go on a lot of dates and I, I ended up in some relationships where I felt like I'm like, why am I? attracting men that are like the cult it was like i was i was attracting men that were because it's comfort that's what it was yeah it's comfort because that's all you've ever known so Mm -hmm. it's and me and me and my friend maria we've we've been in relationships really shitty relationships our whole lives because we grew up around a lot of toxicity so when we date guys not anymore but when we (laughs) used to you know when we when we would date guys um they come into your life in like a really like nice way, but then you start seeing the red flags, but they're coming off as green flags right. because that's all you know. Exactly. You're like, oh, 
literally he's being controlling, but we're just taking it like he cares. He loves me. Yep. He he really gives a shit. He doesn't play about me, you right. know. Um and he's they're really just controlling and manipulating yeah. him, but you think that it's love and it's not. And that's the sad thing is like I had to take a deep internal look at myself and be like, "Okay, Amanda, you are the common denominator here. At some point, you have to look inward and be like, why is it that it, you can't constantly be like, every man is this and that? You know what I mean? Mm, right. I kind of am on a streak like that right now. Like, <laughs> I just can't date men because I can't even trust my Me intuition. Yeah, I won't date anyone. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so... I think I just need to work on myself way more because this last one really fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even talked like publicly about this one because I was like, I was just so baffled. The last two, it was polygamy all over again. And I was so like embarrassed that it happened. It wasn't that I was choosing it. He was doing stuff behind my back. Right. And yeah. I was Poor like, wow, I was just what they do. Exactly. I was forced into polygamy. Like mm -hmm. out here or in there, I'm gonna be living polygamy. Right. So yeah. That's funny because, yeah, um, when you were, like, when we were watching some of the videos and you were talking about your ex-husband and you were like, we love each other and he's faithful and da, da, da. I was like, we were yeah, both we... kind of like, girl, <laughs> like, men outside, they be doing the same stuff. The honestly. same motherfucking thing. Like, but um, I was wondering, like, that <laughs> close friend you had, um, the one who saw you get attacked, mm -hmm. are you, do you still talk to her? So she, I think that they really convinced her to stop talking to me because they didn't want her to text and admit because I was texting um, her at the time and I was, I was trying to get her to tell me what happened so I could get it to the police because mm -hmm. she was a witness and all of a sudden she kind of stopped talking to me. But what's crazy is, a, I think it was three years ago, no, maybe five years ago, I had a really intense dream about her that she was pregnant again or and then my mom reached out and said, hey, this person is trying to get a hold of you. Can can I give her your number? And I told, I, I was like, yeah. And, and we had a just a text message because they have to keep it a secret. Yeah. As soon as someone finds out that they're trying to reach out to Amanda Ray, yeah. red flags. You know, we got to make yeah. sure that this person's not straying. So she did. It was just a very brief conversation. And I was like, oh, hey, I had a dream that you you had were pregnant with your third child or something like that and she was like that's so funny i'm actually trying to get pregnant with my third child mm. i was like that's insane because there's no way i would have known right. i'm not allowed to even be a part of the <laughs> functions anymore mm -hmm. but that was like the only talk that i had with her and then the one remember how i was saying i had a friend that didn't want to marry this guy but she knew she yeah. had to i went to a funeral of um uh someone who was related to a lot of members so there was a lot of order people at this funeral and that friend that didn't want to marry the man was there and by this time he had married multiple women she had multiple kids and I was like oh hi I haven't seen you in so long I just went up to her and I gave her a hug and I was like can I hold your baby she's so cute what's her name and she said Amanda Aww. and I I was trying so hard not to cry part of me was like maybe it's not me because there were other Amandas in the group but I was <laughs> like Amanda. is this my baby <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. but yeah there's no once you leave, like, it's really, it's not just, like, leaving and moving out of state. Like, they hate you. Yeah, you know what I mean? they're cutting their eyes at you at the funeral, like, yeah, at her. Literally. I, yeah. I remember thinking, like, maybe I should have just ended it while I was in there because then they would actually show up to my funeral, you know? Mm. But then you think of it, like, what kind of a love is that? Someone who's not willing to go to your funeral because you didn't want to. Chose yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So... Yeah, I got over that version of myself. But yeah, the whole love thing though, that's something that I'm I'm still working through right now. And ten years out of a cult, I'm still like, you can't be attracted we all are. to that. Yeah. We all are. It's yeah. just tough. It's tough. Some people seem to have it down, but <clears throat> most people don't. Yeah. And we're I, most people. So so here's the thing too, because you're a sweetheart, because I'm a sweetheart, because she's a sweetheart, right? Because I'm a sweetheart. They say they <laughs> well, you get like you get like nice guys though. I we do. get like I pretty do. shitty. I do. I do get we get nice pretty guys. shitty I do get nice guys. guys. I do. Yeah, I we do. get the bottom of the barrel. Dude, but <laughs> yeah, as far as personality goes, <laughs> the you know. Bottom of the barrel. Um, but um, psychologists say that they see that we're really easily manipulated because we have good hearts. Mm. So they look for women like that. So it's not that we're picking the wrong guys; they're picking us. And when they come into our lives. They're very, they're, they're nice, they're attentive, they're sweet, they're loving. They say everything that's, you know, that's going to make you be like, wow, this guy's really fucking great mm -hmm. until you start 
you know, kind of being like, what the what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Why is he being controlling? Why is he being like this? And I, I was actually just talking to a guy because I, I was in really, really bad relationships before. But now that I'm older, I could see the red flags really fast. Right. And I was talking to this guy, and as soon as I saw the red flags, I was like, this ain't working. Yeah. P- please I'm do out. not contact me ever again and just leave me alone. Literally, he was like dumbfounded, but I felt safe. I felt like, you know what? Let me nip this in the bud really, really fast right. because I know what this can turn into, oh, and yeah. I don't want to deal with that. Exactly. You know? So. Do you feel like you have to train yourself to like those positive things? Because- because I do think that it goes both ways. Like we're kind of attracted to the negative and then the positive healthy stuff is kind of unattractive to us. So how do you train yourself? <laughs> well, I, here's the thing. If something is too good to be true very early on, they don't want to get to know you. They don't care about what you like to eat, your favorite color, all the small childish things. If they don't care about that and they're saying, but I love you. I'm just having these deep feelings for you. Oh my God, you're somebody that I can marry. It's all love bombing. That's mm-hmm. all abusive. Yeah. You know? And that was my thing. I was just like, yep. I knew you for two months. You're telling me you love me. Yeah. You know what my problem is? You don't is, even though? know what I fucking <laughs> like, bro. Like you don't even left. know my last mm-hmm. name. Same. I, but I fall for the same stuff. But I'm over here like, I am great. Though. Right, he does love me. <laughs> yeah, it Someone can't be too fast. Do you, when you when you like when you start dating guys, do you um, do they know about your past or like do you, like do you think? <clears throat> sorry, do they do you tell them about your past in the beginning? When I start to see potential, then I do want to tell them about and open up. But I've been told, Amanda, you need to some guys up. like because some guys you might you. use that to manipulate you, yeah. and then also be like, oh well, she was used to this anyway, so like, yeah. that's what we're gonna do. Like, yeah, yeah that's they what I target mean. girls like you, like me, like just s- people that have a lot of empathy. Yeah, they target people like us because they know they can take advantage. Mm-hmm. I guess it's along the same lines of how you're like, oh, do you think the cult leader knows what he's doing? Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, do these men know that they're being like, do they have a system? They know, oh, I'm manipulating, or are they just yeah, absolutely. But they love bomb you first, so you fall for the the good guy that comes mm-hmm. around first, and then they start hitting you with the bullshit. But at, by that time, you're just like, what happened to the good guy I fell in love with? What happened to him? Right. It was never real. Yeah. It was only to reel you in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So what now moving forward, when you start to see that the love bombing when it's really fast, I care about you. Oh my God, this is the best. I never felt like this about a girl before ever. And they're in their fucking thirties to lie. You know? <laughs> um, or or even twenty five. It's like you you've had crushes, you've had, you know, dealt with women before. Um, run. Yeah. That love bombing shit when it's too fast. That's what I did. I'm like, you tell me you love me after two months? You don't even fucking know me, mm-hmm. really? weirdo. Lose my number. Right. Lose my number. <laughs> that's, but I'm like, I'm quick now. Yeah, Before I'm good. like, I mean, he, I mean, I could see him loving me after right. two months. Like, yeah. I am lovable. <laughs> that's where I'm at. Girl, I'm like, no. I'm like, I love myself. So no more. They should too. <laughs> yeah, no more. Be like, yeah. you don't fucking love me. Get the fuck out yep. of here with that shit. That's where I'm at now. I'm like, I need to not date until I can get over that part of myself. Because mm. what this is what my therapist was saying. He's like, the part of yourself that you're having an issue with, you're going to see it come up in every relationship. So you might as well work on that alone mm. unless you want to have to work on it in a relationship. And I was like, it's true. That bad. That's... Not, not to make it dark again, but <laughs> the mental health of the women, I was wondering when you talked about, you know, suicide mm-hmm. and like people... Like, I know I have friends who struggle with that and stuff like that. Were, were, were there any suicides? Like, do people do it, you know, within the um, order? Like, Yeah. Okay. So, and this is the crazy part of, you, you're in the order. I was surrounded by people who love me, love me, right? Surrounded by so much community, but I felt the most alone that I've ever felt in my life. I thought I was the only one who had these thoughts. And I was very convinced that if I stayed, that this is how it was going to end, right? And then I leave, and I talk to all of these women, and they all were going through the same thing. They all felt like they were the only ones that were having these thoughts. And sadly, there was a young girl, I believe she was 14 14 or 15 years old, and she had been getting abused by her dad, who was the leader's brother. Mm -hmm. And she went to the police. There was a whole report, and the police sent them back to the cult. And... Shortly after that, they found her 
um, passed away in the garage. And she, I, I, I think there was a whole pact of girls that said, if we can't get out of here, then we're going to, we're going to take it upon ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? So it's a very real issue. And the, the worst part of her story, I mean, the whole thing is terrible, yeah. but afterwards the dad was so upset that he didn't even want to have a funeral for her because he was like, she committed murder. Like it was like no, oh, no yeah, peace. She's going to hell. Right. Yeah. So, and so they, he's abusing her, but what she just to herself is just worse than <clears> that. It's like that. That's the 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 exactly no accountability. He's yeah. never looking inward. The men are never held accountable. And then when this happens and it's his own daughter, he's mad at her. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, because she probably went to the cops and it was the cop that was getting paid off by the order. Yeah, that's what I think. And you know, by that time, she was just like, if I call the cops again, it's gonna be the same thing. The sad right. part is, some cops don't even need to be paid off to send you back to your abuser. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that, that's a fact. Yeah. That's a and fact. that's he was trying to not even get a headstone for her. He didn't even want to have the <laughs> she just poor baby. Exist. She that's just never movie. existed. Luckily, though, she does have family that was on the outside that tried to get a headstone for her. So mm -hmm. she's, she's, I mean, obviously, she's always gonna be remembered. Right. Like, and this is another reason why I can't stand when older people are like, leave us alone. Stop talking about us. Like, you're, you're harassing us. Who was there to stand up for her? Mm -hmm. Right. So if I have to keep annoying you guys, I'm going to until there's a change. If I see a change, if I see that there's these issues are being solved, you won't have anything to worry about. Right. But you guys are doing things that are ruining lives and why, yeah. calling it God. Why do you need 30 children? The Lord said, that's, that's the all answer to everything. The Lord inbred, said. 30 inbred children that you don't take care of. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's what, right. Yeah. And it, that's that are now sterile. The boys are sterile and the girls right. are, are just coming out miserable. gorgeous. <laughs> just coming out gorgeous. <laughs> like the one good thing is that. <laughs> but yeah, with your question too, with, with the men, <clears throat> do the men leave? It's like that. They don't have to take care of the kids. They don't really have a lot of responsibility, so they don't have to really come face to face with that question of, I'm uncomfortable, I need to leave, right, you right. know? So it is less often that men leave, but they, they do, it does happen. Well, yeah, because you know? they're like, they're literally, I mean, not to sound like an asshole, but they get to have sex with pretty much whoever they want, multiple women constantly. No accountability. Raw no. dogging, mm -hmm. no condoms. Yeah. And then these children come, mm. they have no responsibility yep. for the children. That's so that's like the perfect life for, you know, right. that a douchebag. Me... Right. <laughs> and you know what's insane, too? They're like, oh, if you leave, then men on the outside are, are terrible, da 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 they're doing this and that. I'm like, Child. these men are you guys, right. and you guys are just under the guise of God. Yeah. Right. What's the difference between you and a natural man? That just made me think what you said. Did the men ever step outside and have, like, affairs with women who weren't in the order? Like did people bring back SCDs, like because I know I, they didn't go to the doctor. I don't. I don't. Okay, I just, yeah. you know, I'm just. Like, this is a good question, and this is also it's everything is so brushed under the rug. But I have heard rumors that there was infidelity. I mean, right. It's such yeah. a loose word at this right. point, but <laughs> but that um and that it got brought back. But I don't know. Does that mean that every single person has it now, or what exactly was it that was being bringing? getting brought back mm -hmm. but i do know that even just with three wives like in my my family the yeast infections would get spread around if they're not cleaning themselves and he's going and bouncing around right, you know right, right. so yeah that bv that bv is no joke the <laughs> bacteria vaginosis yeah and it's Terrible. also like when you're uneducated, you don't know what you're doing. So there there probably is a lot of other stuff that's going on that they just have no idea that mm -hmm. they even have exactly yeah that's yeah. crazy Mm. Yeah. Do any of the women ever get a little step out on the side? Yeah, I've they I've better because God damn, so, men look crazy. I know that's what, and and some of these <laughs> girls are so beautiful that I feel like they they have to be getting hit on by by other men, right? Mm. And seeing that they're out is, in the town, and right, stuff. Mm. right, and they could see that there's a potential for other another life. There was a woman who was married to the leader's son, and she was gorgeous. I remember being so sad that she she was like a fifth wife, and she's I'm like, ugh, she could have been, anyway. Every every woman in there, it's sad, right? But I I always thought that she would leave and, and have a different life. But she married him, and she was a polygamist. And then she got pregnant, and the child was Hispanic. Oh. And they were like, yes. <laughs> right? They were like, the, the story's sad, though, because they, they were told her, basically, Shit. you got to get rid of this baby. They made her put it up for adoption. <sighs> and she's still in there. 
and this this child. I don't know if if the the man on the outside took the child, right. but I was told that no one ever saw the kid. It was very hush hush, and so I I wonder because this is the one story I've heard of. I wonder how many times has this happened, mm -hmm. you know? So when you're like the third, fourth, fifth wife, is it like, uh, like, you know, like, this is, you're not the first or the second. A lot of women do try to be the first. In my, in my friend group, they were like, I just want to be the first because they want to experience what it's like to just be in love with one person and just to be the apple of their eye, whatever. But I remember being like, I'd rather be like the 12th because, <laughs> because then you know what you're walking into. The, right. the first wife goes through the heartbreak, right? Mm -hmm. They fall in love. Well, if they like the guy that they're right. with. Right. Falling in love and then watching him fall in love with another one, another one, another one, you know? I'd yeah. rather just be... But either way, you're fucked because even if you're like the new, the shiny new toy, you're the 12th wife, right? you know, then he might want you and only you for, you know, a while because he's sick of the other wives. Right. You know? That's true. Yeah. And that's, I mean, there's always a favorite too, I feel like. And mm -hmm. even in the leader, the leader has 27 wives and you can tell which ones are his favorites. He's always at their homes. They're, they're taken care of more. Mm -hmm. They're very beautiful. And then there's the ones that he just only visits them on their ovulation so he can get them pregnant. He knows all of their ovulation cycles too, wow. to make sure that they are all having kids. And the, you know what the, I know we're kind of trailing on a, a different part of this culture, no, but no, no. Go ahead. David Kingston, his brother went to prison for raping his niece and he, his wives were still getting pregnant while he was in prison for years. And this is the mind blowing. Cause we all knew we all were in the cult seeing his wives having babies, mm -hmm. but he's over here in prison. So I heard they use a turkey baster that they took the semen and had them getting pregnant. But is that possible? Don't you have to like, don't you have to like free semen or something. Uh, yeah, I, th That's I would think I it would die. You're yeah. saying from the prison? Yeah. Is know. that possible if they had a cooler? <laughs> uh, maybe, I guess. Maybe if they knew what they're doing, I guess. Maybe yeah, they I got guess. some scientists it, on the payroll. Yeah, it yeah. would. It, it, Doctors. It, yeah. But yeah, that's I how can't important. imagine it being that easy mm -hmm. um, to just kind of just do the turkey baster. Them girls was getting it popping, talking about, yeah, I got a turkey baster. They was fucking the brother or something. <laughs> that, this is something that people were saying, like, yeah. uh... That makes more sense. Yeah. It's kind of like it, the thing you said about... It's the, not that easy. You can't... It's not yeah, like, I don't think it's that easy. It's kind of like how you said the, the, the guy died originally and then the women who wanted to marry him were marrying his brother because they're like oh, yeah. in proxy. So the maybe proxy. they're just like, okay, I'll have a kid with him. It might come out looking like his brother who in jail and people could believe the story that mm -hmm. a turkey based her. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, I actually never put two and two together that if they were willing to do the married by proxy, then they'd be willing to do that. Sorry, should I explain what married by proxy mm -hmm. is? So the leader who passed away when he was in his 30s and they thought that he was gonna be resurrected, he, there were women that wanted to still marry him and have his kids. He also had wives that could still ch bear children and they wanted to be married to him in the afterlife. So when he died, then um, his brother, basically the next leader took him on as his wives, but those kids and the marriage is really for Eldon who's in heaven. So right. all these kids were not really Ortel's kids, they're really Eldon's kids. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense though that you would put those two together. If they're okay with being like, oh, I'm married to you, on earth but in right. heaven they're his mm -hmm. so they could technically twist it to be like well he's in prison but these are still his kids even mm -hmm. though they're getting the semen from the brother right. mm -hmm. i've never thought about that because the turkey baser is crazy yeah i don't think that's i don't i believed that when i was in <laughs> when the group. I'm like, i don't think that's that that it works like that yeah. i don't think I don't just think... the travel time yeah. and everything or it hit in the air dying off the sperm's dying off yeah. right I, I could imagine that being very complicated and well, with God, all things are possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's why I was able to believe it, because anything can happen if you just believe in God. Yeah, no, no like, but I get it. God blessed the semen. Right. So it lasted from the jailhouse <laughs> to the, <laughs> like, you know. So if you could say if, uh, you know, some of the girls or guys, you know, that are still in the order watch this, right? What would you say to them? How is it on the outside? Is it? better i think that obviously in the group they scare us and they make us have so much fear about the outside world and if you're living in fear you're not really thinking rationally so we're we're constantly thinking irrationally in the order and i really think it comes down to the devil you know is is what's that quote the devil you know is more familiar and easier than the angel you don't know mm -hmm. 
right? So it's that familiarness of like knowing that this is the true kingdom of God. You have that really safe, you feel very safe where you're at. But at the end of the day, I think that you need to question everything until it makes sense. And I know that everyone watching from the order, you're watching for a reason and you are questioning. And that is your internal intuition. Right. And you need to follow that if you want to be happy. If you want to be happy, you need to follow your intuition and find who you are or you're never going to be truly happy. And I know in the order they say true happiness is not found doing what you want to do. It's learning to like to do the things you ought to do. We were taught mm. to say this every day, right? To brainwash ourselves into believing that this this is the true church and this is where we got to be. But at the end of the day, there's a reason why you're still searching for the answers. It's because they don't feel right. Right. And I encourage anyone, e even people on the outside, everywhere, to try to find that internal dialogue and try to find what feels right for you and trust in your own intuition. The sad thing about these cults, though, is they really want to make sure that you don't have a, an internal compass. They want to make sure you don't have morals and values that are your own. They want to, you know, cookie cutter make you into this, you know, because it helps the religion mm -hmm. to make these robots. But if you can find your internal dialogue and find your your morals and values and find the life that in lines with that, that's how you can truly be happy. And I wouldn't be able to say this in the order. I wouldn't even know any of this in the order. Right. And I'm not saying that everyone in the order has to leave, mm -hmm. but I'm saying find out what's truly best for you and find who you are as a person. Because I don't think it, 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 they all believe in God. So I'm going to talk in that God terms. If God created you and put you on this earth just to be a robot and follow the same path as everyone else, what what's the purpose of us even being here? Mm -hmm. Right. If it's the beginning and end is the same. Mm -hmm. So That's I think, a fact. yeah, find your individuality. And then you'll be happy. <laughs> That's a good statement. Do you have any more questions for our Joe? No, this is a great, great session. This is so good. great. I'm glad. <laughs> do you want to um, plug your Instagram, your YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. If um, Which camera do I look at? <laughs> oh, you can look at this Maybe one. That one. Okay, yeah. One? If you're interested in hearing more about like my life story, and I also interview other ex-cult members, I have a YouTube channel. It's Amanda Ray. And then I also have my Instagram. It's Amanda Ray Grant. Yeah. Cool, and we'll we'll put that up on the screen. Okay, for, perfect. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank we you really for enjoyed me. this. This was absolutely. Good. <laughs> Thanks. That's it for today's episode. If you like it, leave me a review, share your stories, and I might just pick a few to read on a future episode. This episode is recorded at Spotify Studios in Los Angeles. Subscribe to I Hope They're Not Listening wherever you're listening to this podcast right now, and we'll be back with more soon.